Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over some sample questions from the new Algebra 1 Regents exam. If you didn't know, the Algebra 1 Regents exam is getting a makeover. Um, I don't know, I don't really know why, but they are implementing these new standards in math. So uh, not only is, are you taking a new test with new questions in Algebra 1, but you're also taking the test like a week earlier on June 4th, I believe. So. Um, I tried to find uh, a practice test that had these new generation questions, but I couldn't really find one. What I did find were, were, were these sample questions from uh, the New York uh, State Assessment, which is the people that make the regents, right? So they gave out these sample questions to get you a feel of how the test would be like. It's, um, it's pretty much five questions, so we're going to go over them, and I'm going to do it without a calculator to show you how you may... Uh, tackle some of the newer questions on the test, right? So for some of these questions, I'm going to do it in this um, tab right here. For other ones, I'm going to do it in right here uh, in, on this blank sheet of paper, right? So number one says what or asks us, what is the sum of 3x radical 7 plus 2x radical 7? So this is testing you on uh, on rules when it comes to dealing with radicals. The rule that you need to know here is that when you have the same radical with a coefficient, and you want to add them, you add the coefficients and keep the radical. So for example, a radical c plus b root c is equal to a plus b root c. So so long as the thing, so long as the root or the radical is the same, so long as they match, all you have to do is add up the coefficients. So really, plug it into our form here. If this is a and this is b and our C is 7, so it matches here, it matches here, it's the same. All we have to do is just do A plus B root C. So A is 3, B is 2x, 3x plus 2x is equal to 5x, and 5x radical 7 is your answer, or 5, 5x root 7. Number 2 asks us, what is the equation of a line that passes through the points 2 comma 7 and negative 1 comma 3? And here are your answer choices. And this may seem confusing, but this is actually a, a new form that they're testing on. This is called point-intercept form or point-slope form, right? And point-slope form is just a way of expressing y equals mx plus b at a specific, at a specific point. Right, so the formula goes y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. So here, your m is still the slope, but your y1 is the y value of a point, and your x1 is an x value of the same point. That's all. So in order to... Uh, find the equation that passes through these two points. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to find m, and I'm gonna have to find a y1 and an x1 value to fit into that, right? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna find my m, or I'm gonna find my slope. And in order to find the slope, you need two points. Fortunate for us, we do have two points. We're given two points: two comma seven and negative one comma three. So our slope is going to equal to um, seven minus three divided by two minus negative 1, right? And this is going to equal to 4 over 3, right? Because 2 minus negative 1 is 3. So our slope is 4 thirds. And I'll write, I'll rewrite point intercept or yeah, point slope form right here. So y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1, right? So we know that this matches this form, right? And our m has to be 4 thirds. So the thing outside of the x minus whatever has to be 4 thirds. So we're limiting choice 1 and 3 because this is 3 fourths. We need 4 thirds. Now all we need to do is plug in two valid points, right? So here notice how our answers are dealing with 2 and 7. So we're going to be using this point right here in our equation. Now let's write it out. y minus y1. What's our y value for 2 comma 7? Our y value is going to be 7. So we do y minus 7, which is the y value of our point, is equal to m, our slope, which is 4 over 3 times x minus x1. What is the x value for that point? 2 comma 7. 2 is your x, 7 is your y, so you do x minus 2. And this is your equation. y minus 7 is equal to 4 thirds x minus 2. Moving on to number 3, it asks you to rationalize 3 over 2 radical 6, right? When you want to rationalize something, it's when you want to make the denominator rational. Every single time you're asked to rationalize a function, 
or an, or, or an expression, you're going to be dealing with a usually a rational top. And it's going to be divided by something radical something, right? And when you want to rationalize this, you want to get rid of the radical or the irrational number in the denominator, right? So when they ask you to rationalize 3 over 2 root 6, they're asking you to rewrite this in a way in which this radical 6 is no longer in the denominator. And the, the equation or, or the, the method to rationalize something is to multiply the top and the bottom by the irrational number or by the thing that's being uh, um, rooted, right? So for example, if I had 3 over um, b root a, the way to rationalize this would be to multiply both sides by root a over root a, right? And that, that's just the format. That's just how you find that. So you multiply the top and the bottom by the radical. So if I want to rationalize 3 over 2 root 6, my, ration, my irrational thing or my radical here is going to be radical 6. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by, that, by my irrational or by my root, which is root 6 over 6. Right? So I'm going to multiply both sides by that root in my denominator, which is 6. So root 6 times over root 6. So I'm going to multiply this out. Then I'm going to get 3 root 6 divided by 2 times 2 root 6 times root 6. When I have root 6 times root 6, that's the same thing as saying root 6 squared, which is the same thing as just saying 6. And I just add this 2 times 6, which it gives me 12. So if you rationalize 3 over 2 root 6, you can rewrite this as 3 root 6 over 12. And notice how my denominator no longer has a r irrational number. In other words, we got rid of the radical sign by multiplying the top and the bottom by the radical, right? And 2 root 6 times root 6 is just equal to 12. That's equal to 6 times 2, because these two cancel each other out. Okay, so that's how you rationalize something. For number 4, I am going to write this on a separate sheet of paper, right? But essentially what they want you to do here, I'll write 4 up there, what they want you to do here is use the method of completing the square to solve for x in the equation uh, x squared plus 6x plus 41, or minus 41, is equal to zero. So it, completing the square is also found on the old test, right? So in order to complete the square, you do b over two squared, and then you add this value to both sides, right? So in order to make this more simple for me, I'm gonna first move my, my the, the non-x term to the left side. So I'm gonna rewrite this as x squared plus six x is equal to 41, okay. Next, I'm going to apply my b over 2 rule. Always remember that whenever you want to find or complete the square, you're going to take b over 2 squared and you're going to add it to both sides. Um, and generally, what you want to do is you want to get rid of any numbers on one side. So for example, 41 is a number and we got rid of it. We got rid of it to the other side, right? So anything without an x, you want to move to another side. 41 did not have an x, so we moved it to the other side. Now, we need to identify what our a and what our b is. Our a is going to be the coefficient in front of x, which is one, and our b is going to be the coefficient in front of, uh, sorry, our a is going to be the coefficient in front of x squared, which is one, and our b is going to be our coefficient in front of x, which is six. So what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have six over two squared. Six over two is three, and three squared is equal to nine. So I'm going to have to add nine to both sides. Now I'm left with x squared plus six x plus nine, is equal to 50. And now I have completed the square because I can rewrite this formula or this expression as x plus 3 squared, right? Remember that a uh, plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, right? And notice here how x plus 3 is just equal to, if I, if I do x plus 3 squared, and follow this where this is a and this is b, I get x squared plus 6x plus 9, right? So I, I, I you, you could have factored this out normally, but I just recognize that we have this form and you should recognize that too. So now I have x plus 3 squared is equal to 50. So I completed the square and now I need to solve for these values of x. So how do I solve for these values of x? I'm going to, I'm going to, well, I have a, something being squared here. So in order to get into this parentheses, I need to get rid of this square up top. How do I do that? 
I find the radical, right? Or or I put I take the square root of both sides. So the square root of both sides is going to give me x plus 3. This square root cancels out that square. And this is going to give me plus minus radical 50. Why does this give me plus minus radical 50? Because guess what? Um, negative 50 squared, right? How do I get back to this step? I can get back to this step by squaring both sides, right? But guess what? And if I square both sides, then I'm left with x plus 3 squared is equal to 50. But guess what? Negative 50 squared is equal to 50. And 50 squared, and so uh, this and this are both equal to 50, right? So you need to include the plus minus. Remember that. Because um, then, then that... Because negative 50 squared is going to give you 50. Positive 50 squared is also going to give you 50, right? Uh, assuming you have a radical sign in front of it. Because the same way negative 3 squared is equal to 9 and 3 is equal, 3 squared is equal to 9, right? It's that trick where it's like radical, <clears throat> where it's like you, you need to write the plus minus 50 in front of it, pretty much, right? So now you have x plus 3 is equal to plus minus 50 squared. And now all I need to do is just subtract 3 on both sides. And I get x is equal to negative 3 plus minus root 50. That's just my answer, right? Um, so that's how you do it. Remember b over 2 squared. And remember that when you, uh, when you, when you take a radical or when you square root sides, you want to add a plus minus in front of it in front of whatever's happening, unless otherwise stated. So now moving on to number five, which is the last question. Um, it asks us to solve the following system of equations algebraically for all values of x and y, right? So a system of equation is essentially just a set of two equations, right? Uh, so y is equal to x squared plus 5x minus 17, and x minus y is equal to 5. So x minus y is equal to 5. So we have these two uh, equations and we want to solve uh, for x and y. Um, so how do we do this? We do this uh, by setting or solving for one term and plugging it back in. What does that mean? What this means is that we're, for, we're going to solve for what x or y is and we're going to plug that value back into one of these equations. The fastest way we can do this is by focusing on this bottom equation, right? Because look, I can easily rewrite x minus y is equal to 5 at if I just add y on both sides, I get x is equal to 5 plus y, right? And because I know what x is, I can plug it into this top equation, right? So now I have y is equal to x squared. I know that x is equal to 5 plus y squared, so 5 plus y. So all I have to do is just plug that into x squared. So y is equal to 5 plus y squared plus 5 times 5 plus y minus 17. So all I did here was I just plugged in on my x value that I just found, right? So why did I use the bottom one to find this x value? Because it's faster, right? It's the fastest way to do it. All you have to do is just add y on both sides. Here, if I wanted to solve for x or y, that would have taken a while, right? Um, so yeah, I solved for x first. And you could do the same here if you already know what y is. It doesn't really matter. Um, this is just how I'm going to do it. So I solved for x, I got 5 plus y, and then I just plugged this value in for every single, every single time I saw x up here, I plugged this value 5 plus y into it. And I just attached any operation that's being done to the x to this y, right? So if it was being squared, I squared it. If it was being multiplied by 5, I put a 5 in front of it. Now all I have to do is just solve for y here. Everything is in terms of y, so I can actually get an answer. So y is equal to 25 plus 10y plus y squared plus 25 plus 5y minus 17. And now all I need to do is combine like terms. 25 plus 25 is 50. And then 50 minus 17 is equal to 33. Okay, cool. So y is equal to 33 plus. Now we have 10y plus 5y is equal to 15y, and then y squared we just leave alone. Now I need want to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract, I'm going to get y on one side, I'm going to subtract by y on both sides, and I have 0 is equal to 33 plus 14y plus y squared. And now I'm going to rewrite this. We're, we're, this is all being added, so it doesn't matter what order I write it in, I'm just going to write it in an order that is clear for you to see what I'm going to do. So I'm going to re rewrite this as y squared plus 14y 
plus 33 is equal to 0, right? And now I'm going to use FOIL to factor this out. So what's a number that adds to 14 but multiplies into 33? It's going to be 11 times 3. So 11 times 3 is 33, and 11 plus 3 is equal to 14. So now I could rewrite this as 0 is equal to y squared plus 3y plus 11y plus 33. And then I'm going to factor out my y, so I have y plus 3. Here I'm going to factor out an 11, so I have y plus 3. And now I have 0 is equal to y minus, so y plus 11 times y plus 3. Cool. So now I need to solve for the values of y that makes it true. So y plus 11 is equal to 0, and y plus 3 is equal to 0. So that means that y has to equal to negative 11, and y has to equal to negative 3. Am I done yet? No, because they asked us for all, um, for all values of x and y. And I now know all values of y, so guess what? Because I know that y and I'll, I'll zoom out and I'll write this over here. I know that y is equal to negative 11 and y is equal to negative 3. Now I need to find the x value that goes with them. So I just plug it back into this original equation that was on top, right? Um, which was x minus y is equal to 5. So if x minus y is equal to 5, plug in these values for y. If y is negative 11, that means x plus 11 is equal to 5. So x has to equal to negative 6, right? And if y is negative 3, that means that x plus 3 is equal to 5. So x has to equal to 2, right? So your solution set here is that y is equal to 11, x equals negative 6, and y is equal to negative 3, and x equals to 2, right? So you could just write negative 11 comma negative 6. Sorry, negative 6 comma negative 11. You could write it in as like a, as like a point as well. Um, so negative 6 comma negative 11 and and just two comma negative three right or you could just write it up here like i did and that's all five questions uh i really wish they put a full practice test out and i, I wish that i knew about this change sooner so i could make more videos about it but if you have any questions or if you have any uh, material that you want me to go over please let me know um in the comments below and i'll try to get to it Otherwise, I hope you learned something and I wish you well on, I wish you luck on this uh, on this new test. So goodbye.